Before we get into today's video, I did want to let you guys know that this video is for educational purposes only. Please remember to be kind to everybody everywhere in your everyday life, in your home, in the grocery store, and especially in the comment section down below. Please do not show hate to anybody anywhere. Good morning, my lovelies, my beauties, my friends. My name is Christina and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, thank you so much for clicking on this video. I really hope that you will subscribe, stick around, take a chance in hearing some things that I have to say. And if you are a returning subscriber, y'all already know, y'all are my babies. So good morning, good morning, good morning. How is everybody doing today? I hope you all are having an amazing day. Hope you all have had a, another wonderful week. And I am here with you guys on this Friday with one of my most highly requested videos, the Skylar Niece case. Now, you guys, I started working on this case about two months ago, I would say. And it has taken me this long to just finally finish everything, get my thoughts together, and create this video for you guys. Have you guys heard about it? So I'm going to do this video like I do basically all of my videos. I'm going to tell you guys the whole entire story first. And then at the end, I'm going to give you guys my opinions, tell y'all where everybody is nowadays, what's going on, all of that good jazz. So first, we'll just start with the story and let's just start at the beginning. Skylar Annette Niece was 16 years old. She was born in Morgantown, Virginia. She was an only child. She was born in February of 1996. She was her parents' pride and joy. Okay, she was a huge daddy's girl. Very, very, very loved by her mother and her father that lived in the same household. It was just her and her mom and dad. Skylar was what you would just call a regular 16 year old girl. She went to high school, she had her best friends. She had a job working at Wendy's that she loved. She wanted to eventually finish high school and go off to college and become a criminal justice lawyer. Skylar was about 5'4", ivory skin, bright blue eyes, dark brown hair, a dimple in her chin, and a bright smile. She was a great student. She made straight A's. She was later to be called one of her high school's top students. She enjoyed reading, music, and social media. She was really big on Twitter. Skylar's mother's name was Mary. She was an administrative assistant, and her father, Dave, was a product assembler at Walmart. Skylar's mother said that it was love at first sight. She she said the day that she went into labor with her was probably not her favorite day for reasons us moms, we can understand. Nevertheless, it was love at first sight when they put baby Skylar into her arms. So again, like I said, this is their pride and joy. Her parents, Mary and Dave, Skylar was their whole entire life. I mean, she was administrative assistant. He was putting together products at Walmart and it was Skylar. Everything was about Skylar. When Skylar was in second grade and she was about eight years old and she was going to this community church that they had, she met who would later become her best friend, Sheila Eddy. Now, Sheila kind of came from a broken home. She was rough around the edges. She was very bubbly, but she had that bad girl vibe, that, that edgy vibe to her. Sheila and Skylar were inseparable all the rest through elementary school and then on to middle school. And when Sheila and Skylar were in middle school, they met their third best friend, Rachel Schof. Rachel was described as a spunky redhead who loved to dance and she loved theater and acting and drama. And the three girls then were inseparable. They were just best friends. They went through middle school together and then eventually to high school bringing us to the time that we're talking about now when all three of the girls were 16 years old. The three girls spent time on social media together. In high school, they would be clicked up, those three. Now, different people in the high school would say that Sheila was definitely the bad girl type of the three. There was people that loved the two girls, Rachel and Skylar, but could not stand Sheila. Then there were people that really just gravitated towards Sheila. But nevertheless, Sheila was kind of the one that stuck out of the three, and Skylar was the good girl of the three. She was daddy's little girl. She was the straight A student. Now Skylar's dad was the voice of reason between the three girls. The three girls in high school, they would always come over to Skylar's house. They didn't even knock. Rachel and Sheila just walked right in. 
Skylar's parents would later say that the other two girls were their kids too. They, they, they took them on like they were their daughters, especially Sheila, because Sheila was the one who came from the broken home. Skylar's mom would later say that she thought that she could help her, letting her come over, you know, come over for dinner and spend the night and all these sleepovers and just being in their home. They thought that, you know, they could be that good positive influence for Sheila and help her. Now, Rachel had a little bit of a rebellious streak as well, although she came from a very religious background. Her parents were really structured and they went to church all the time and they had a lot of traditional religious values. And so more or less for these three high school girls, Skylar's home was the more comfortable laid back home where there was structure and rules, but however, it was just a, a warm family environment there. Now, Sheila became definitely the ringleader of the three, the one kind of calling the shots, and as they were all three 16 years old, this is when they really started smoking weed. Now, Rachel and Sheila were smoking weed together at first and was not even telling Skylar, because she was the goody-goody. She was the goody-goody of the two, so they were smoking weed behind her back. Eventually, they let her in on it, and because Skylar started to feel left out. Now, you guys know, if y'all have ever had a friend where there's three of you teenagers like as adults you can do that if you're all three mature which I do know some immature adults so hold that thought but like when you've got three 16 year old little girls you know like somebody's gonna be the third will at some point and the third will unfortunately ended up being Skylar Nevertheless, as time went on, they did, you know, kind of start talking her into smoking weed and sneaking out and drinking and, and doing little things. But Skylar wasn't involved in it too much. She snuck out a couple times, but she wasn't the one instigating it. And the other two girls felt that. And so they stopped including her in as much as they used to. And Skylar's Twitter reflected her feelings of being left out. Skylar would make little tweets on her Twitter saying things like, you know, thanks for leaving me out and can't trust any of you guys and stuff like that. Just very indirect tweets. But I think the other two girls knew who she was referring those tweets to. There was a time that all three girls were staying and having a sleepover. And it came out that Skylar saw the other two girls, Sheila and Rachel, being intimate together. It was rumored that they thought that Skylar would snitch on them and tell that they were having this type of relationship. Now, I don't know why they would be so concerned that this got out, maybe because Rachel's family was very religious and maybe Rachel's religious family wouldn't care. I mean, I don't know, but that was the rumor going around high school that the two girls had been intimate together and Skylar saw it and they were kind of trying to push Skylar out of the way because they didn't want her telling their deep, dark secrets and their skeletons in their closet. Now, to me, I can't figure that out because to me, that just does not seem like a big, deep, dark secret. Like, I mean, you know, like if you kill somebody, that's a big, deep, dark secret because that's something you don't want the whole school to know, right? Or if you have robbed a bank, but maybe in their environment, maybe it was, we don't necessarily know, but let's just keep moving here. That was a high school rumor. There was even rumors going around in the school that the other two girls, Rachel and Sheila, was talking about killing their best friend, Skylar. Now you don't imagine like these high school girls to be like, you know, what if we just killed her? Rachel was ranting to me how much she didn't like Skylar one day. Well, she said word for word, I'm pretty sure was, I wouldn't mind if she died at this point. I mean, what kind of conversations are y'all having in high school nowadays? We didn't have those conversations, but nevertheless, that was what high school students would later come forth and say. On July 2nd of 2012, Skylar was moping around her house. Her parents were there. She was so lonely and saying that she hadn't talked to her friends in a while and she hadn't hung out with them. Skylar's mom tried to encourage her and say, hey, why don't you read this book? She knew that she was really into these Twilight books, like, hey, read a book or hey, do this and tried to to cheer her up, but nothing would cheer Skylar up. She missed her two best friends. She even made this tweet that said, sick of being effing home. Thanks, friends. Love hanging out with y'all too. So around this time, Sheila and Rachel are hanging out a lot because it is summertime. They're getting ready to go in a couple months back to high school. And Rachel was getting ready to go away to a church camp for a little bit over the summer. And so Rachel and Sheila invite Skylar to sneak out one night. Now, at first, First, Skylar was hesitant. She didn't really want to sneak out anyways to begin with, but she missed her friends and she was wanting to like reconcile with them. Like she knew they were hanging out. There's nothing worse 
than missing your best friend, and, but knowing that the, your two best friends are living it up and having so much fun while you're sitting at home being left out, doing nothing, reading the same Twilight books over and over and over again. Like I feel for her, especially at 16, like it's summertime. What, what are y'all doing? Can we go riding? Can we go do something? So they invited her to sneak out on this night. And although she was hesitant at first, she decided that she was going to go with them. On July 5th of 2012, when Skylar got off of work that evening from Wendy's, she came home. She saw her parents that was laying around. They were laying on the couch watching TV. She gave her mom a hug, told her she was going to bed. She gave her dad a hug and a kiss on the head, told them both that she loved them and she would see them the next day when they woke up. She went into her room and she waited. At 12.30 the next morning on July 6th of 2012, she opened up her window quietly. She took a stool that she had in her room. She took it out the window. She dropped it down on the ground. She threw a purse over her shoulders. She stepped out of the window. She closed it quietly behind her and she walked across the street to the parking lot where Sheila and Rachel were waiting in a car for her. Now at this point, Skylar's plan was just to ride around with them. They were gonna go joyriding. They was gonna smoke some weed. They was gonna hang out. She was gonna come back and she was gonna get to hang out and laugh with her friends. When she jumped in the back seat, closed the door behind her in the car with her friends, they headed to Blacksville and they hopped on Interstate 19. They're riding and they rode to a kind of secluded place, a wooded area where they had been before to smoke. They would just go there, chill, smoke, talk and the plan was for them to just head back to the house. But Sheila and Rachel had other plans. They had actually been planning to kill their best friend Skylar for months. They had planned this out. In the car, they had packed a bag that had kitchen knives in it. They had cleaning cloths so they could clean up their mess. They had a shovel. They had bleach and paper towels. I mean, it's unbelievable to think about what these 16 year old girls had planned in their mind. They all three got out of the car and Sheila and Rachel had the knives on them. All of the other supplies they left in the car. Skylar's just skipping along, happy to be with her best friends and has no clue at this point what is coming for her. They all three get out of the car and start walking down towards the wooded area. Rachel and Sheila say, oh my gosh, we forgot the lighter. Can you go back and get the lighter, Skylar? Skylar's like, sure. She turns around to head back to the car to get the lighter and Rachel says, on three. Three, two, one, and they both started stabbing her. There in the dark of night in the woods, just those three girls, they're stabbing her. And at this point, Skylar actually starts trying to fight back and starts trying to run. Well, she runs first and the girls tackle her. They tackle her, they're stabbing her. She starts fighting back. She actually tries to get the knife from one of the girls, I think it was Rachel, and cuts her in her knee. And they just stab her, stab her, stab her. And the girls would later say that they knew she was dead when the gurgling sound stopped in her throat and that her last words that little Skylar spoke were why, why? The two girls then got up. It was said that they stabbed her over 50 times. That is a unbelievable amount. The girls got up, they drug her body. They were gonna drag her across the way and bury her. But when they tried to get the shovel into the ground, they realized that because of that soil, it was really hard to dig. So they just drug her little body over to this area and they covered it with rocks and sticks and leaves and threw some dirt on top of her and they got in their car and they drove off and left her. From there, the two girls went and they cleaned themselves up. They disposed of the clothes that they had on. They cleaned up the car as best as they could and they went back to their home where they were having a sleepover and crawled in the bed and went to sleep. The next morning at Skylar's house, when Skylar's dad got up and went to Skylar's room, knock, 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 he gets into her room, opens the door and sees that she's not in the bed. He's kind of like, okay, where is she? He goes to speak to her mom. She said, listen, Skylar's mom said, she's, it's summertime. She's probably at the beach with her friend. She's probably hanging out, like calm down. Like Skylar's dad was the one. And at this time, I called Skylar's cell phone. I said, hey, you're in trouble. You better be calling me right away. So I called her cell phone about 10 times. I called Mary again. Again, Mary told him to calm down. She said Skylar was expected at work at four. I said, we're not gonna worry. I'll call them about 
10 after 4, give her time to clock in, everything, see if she's there. 4 o'clock rolls around and they're sitting at the house waiting for it to be 410 so they can call Wendy's and Wendy's calls them. They pick up the phone and Wendy says, hey, is Skylar coming into work today? She was supposed to be here at 4. And in that moment, that's when Skylar's mom, Mary, knew that, okay, something is wrong. Where is she? She would not just not show up to work. Now everything is starting to pile on top of each other and they're starting to panic. Again, they call around with the friends. Friends, again, say they don't know anything that's going on. And then before you know it, Sheila decides to call back. Sheila calls back and says, listen, I gotta be honest with you here. And Skylar's parents are like, okay, honest about what? She says, we snuck out last night about 11 o'clock. I came by there, you know, we went joyriding. We were going to smoke a little bit of weed. I didn't want to tell you because I didn't want her to get in trouble. But when I dropped her off, she asked me to drop her off at like down the street so we wouldn't wake you up. But I brought her back and that was it. So she went out with me and that was it. Her parents started to panic. They're like, oh my gosh, well, somebody else must have kidnapped her, taken her. Like, where is she? So they call the cops. Now the cops get involved. They come there, they take a report, they talk to all the friends. And at this point, they're just thinking like, okay, she's done, went off with some, you know, cops, they see runaway cases all the time, runaway, sneak out. A girl sneaks out the window, she goes with her boyfriend, she's gone for two days. Like, it may not be normal in their home or my home or your home, but the police, they see this type of thing all the time. So they're like, okay, we're gonna give it a little bit of time. She's 16, she left willingly. Although the parents are like, no, she didn't. The cops have something that they have to go through here. The police get a hold of the apartment complex and they ask for the security camera footage. When they pull the security camera footage, they see something that they're not expecting to see. They see at 12.30 a.m., not at 11 p.m., like the girls said, they saw her getting in this unknown white vehicle in another parking lot. So at this point, Skylar's parents think, oh my goodness, the girls, her best friends, they brought her home. She came home and then she snuck out again for a second time with another person and this person took her off somewhere. Sheila at this point is coming to her house talking to the parents like, where would Skylar go? Well, she wouldn't tell me I'm her best friend. How dare her leave and not tell me knowing the whole time what her and Rachel did to her and knowing exactly where Skylar was. Her body's laying in a wooded area somewhere off a highway in Blacksville. She spent a lot of time here telling us that it'll be okay, she'll be home, and I really miss her, I love her, I want her back. Skylar's parents trusted Sheila. This was her best friend since second Great. This wasn't no stranger. This wasn't no homegirl she just met off of Twitter. This was somebody that had spent many nights at their house. Somebody that they had bought Christmas presents for and had spent birthdays there. And, you know, it's just, this was somebody that was very close to them. They had no reason to suspect Rachel and Sheila or disbelieve them in any way. Days turned into weeks and nobody had heard from Skylar. Before you know it, school had went back in and Skylar was not in class. Skylar's parents were devastated. Again, you guys, and, and not saying if you're a parent that if you have multiple kids, then you can afford to lose one. No, I mean, no parent should ever have to go through any of this. No child should ever have to go through any of this. You guys know what I'm saying, but please understand that, that these parents, this was their only child and this was their lifeline. They lived for Skylar. So now that Skylar was gone, the parents, they didn't know what to think, what to believe. Now, when school got back in, they're in high school, okay? Rumors are going all around high school. There was all kind of rumors on Twitter, everything. The rumor was that Skylar was at some party and she OD'd and she died. And so like all these rumors are circulating around, you know, the cops are still investigating this. They're hearing these rumors. The cops are starting to think that Sheila and Rachel know something. Okay, she that they were the last known people to see her. Where is your friend? Tell us the truth. Was she at a party? There was actually a bank that was robbed over in Blacksville and there started being rumors that she was kidnapped 
attacked by these bank robbers. So the police are, are really, really hounding Sheila and Rachel about this. They're like, you know something. What other guys did she talk to? At this point, they are not suspecting at all that Rachel and Sheila did something to her. They think that they just know what happened to her. So they're continuing to go up to the school. And before you know it, the FBI is involved. It's on and popping. So now the FBI is coming up to the school and interviewing all the students, but they're really interviewing Sheila and Rachel and they're interviewing them over and over and over again. The investigators would later say that Sheila, every single time, cool, calm, and collective, she would sit there and talk to them, eye contact, cool as a cucumber, didn't flinch, told the same story over and over again, picked her up at 11, we drove around real quick, smoked a little bit of weed, dropped her off down the street, that's all we know. They would say that Rachel, her body language is a little bit different. She'd be like playing with a pencil and looking off and was just giving off a very different vibe like she possibly knew something. At this point, Skylar's parents were getting very frustrated with the FBI agents and the investigators. They were like, why are you wasting your time with her best friends? They're having a hard time here. Do you not understand? Like they lost their best friend, Skylar. Matter of fact, Skylar's dad actually either called or went up to the police station and confronted them and said, leave Sheila alone, leave her alone. She is devastated. She's over at my house crying almost every day. She lost her best friend. Can you go look somewhere else? Can you go find my daughter? Leave her friends alone. Like leave her alone. So you defended her. Oh, oh God, yeah. yeah. She was like our daughter. He stood up for these girls, you guys. Oh my gosh. However, not long after this, now Christmas goes by. So this is six months now that Skylar's been gone. And there was all kinds of stuff, man. So many whispers at the school, first of all. People were saying that the girls, Sheila and Rachel, they were still acting the same. They definitely wasn't acting guilty. However, they spent a lot more time together, like in secret, like quiet, probably going over and over their story, probably talking about what their interrogations or their interviews were like at the time. But there was like different videos of, you know, the girls, they were just acting normal like and the fact that Sheila was going over to the parents house and like you guys there was all kind of search parties people were putting flyers up Sheila was the main one with uh Skylar's parents out there stapling flyers passing out flyers calling people like she was in the forefront of the search for her best friend that she killed and left in the woods we're gonna get there to my opinions on this later Let's keep going here. The cops went to different places and they went to a convenience store and they pulled security footage. And when they pulled this security footage, this is when the case started to get a bit of a light at the end of the tunnel. They saw Sheila's car. The other car, when they saw Skylar getting into that car, it was too grainy and too far away to actually recognize that that was Sheila's car. That wasn't just some random person's car. That was actually Sheila's car that she had gotten into at 1230, not at 11, like they said. But when they pulled the security camera footage from this gas station, they saw clear as day that this was her car. And not only did they see it, they saw it at a different time that the girls had been. I mean, you guys got to remember, they had been interviewing these girls over and over and over again. So they had told this story over and over and over again that it was 11 o'clock. And now they're catching her on this footage at like 1231 AM. Okay. Not only that, they see that the girls were actually heading east towards Blacksville versus west. Like the girls had been telling the police that they were headed. So now they knew that the girls were definitely lying and that they knew more than what they were saying. At this point, the investigators had all they needed to really investigate these two young girls. So they went and pulled their cell phone records. And when they did, they saw that Rachel's cell phone pinged at a tower in Blacksville. So you guys remember the rumors about the bank, well, the bank robbery was not a rumor, but about the party and the overdose. So now the cops are thinking that, okay, they pinged there in Blacksville. So now these three girls, they went to this party where these guys had robbed this bank and she probably OD'd and her body is somewhere. Like you need to tell us, you need to tell. So now they're really, they're pressuring these girls. They are putting the heat on these girls. And Skylar's parents are in on it too. At this point, Skylar's parents know, okay, they know something. They know something. And so they started like making all these indirect posts on Facebook about how, you know, karma was going to hit them or hit somebody, whoever was involved with Skylar's you know, disappearance, you're going to get caught and just really 
putting that out there. Before you know it, Rachel has a complete breakdown. There's actually a 911 call where Rachel's mom has to call 911 and you can hear Rachel screaming in the background. And she's like, okay, no, this is over. This is over. My husband's trying to contain her. Oh, please hurry. Rachel ended up going into a psych ward. And when she went into this psych ward or this mental hospital, I don't know what the actual correct term is. I read psych ward. Is that the correct term? You guys let me know down below. Psych ward, mental hospital. What is the correct term for that? Psych ward is what they said. So she goes into there. And then before you know it, the investigators get a call. The call is from somebody representing Rachel. And they said, we need y'all to meet us at Rachel's lawyer's office. Now her parents went and got her a lawyer, honey. Whatever she told them when she was having that breakdown, they went on down there and got her their daughter a lawyer. She was going to need it. Stay with me here. We need y'all to meet us down at Rachel's lawyer's office. Rachel has something she wants to tell you. So the investigators set it all up. They go down to the lawyer's office and there is Rachel with her head hung. And the investigators were like, what happened? Did she OD? What happened to her? And Rachel looked up at the investigators and said, we stabbed her. Oh my gosh, I have chills, you guys. <sighs> when the investigator said he was not expecting that, he just looked at her like, what do you mean you stabbed her? And Rachel told the whole entire story. And at that moment, the investigator was like, what exactly are we dealing with here? Like this, they, they were, they were never expecting it to be the two 16 year old girls. Ugh. So the investigators decided that they were going to work with Rachel. Now they did not arrest her. They needed to get Sheila. Rachel told them where the body was. So the investigators went out there and they found what was left of little Skylar's body. They collected her body, they sent it off to the lab, and the FBI confirmed that yes, it was her body. And at this point, the FBI calls Skylar's parents and breaks the news to them saying that her body was found. You guys have to remember too, at this point, Skylar's parents still do not know that the two girls were involved. The investigators kept their lips tight because they did not want anything to compromise the case against Sheila. They needed to get Sheila. And people were asking the investigators, like, why didn't you just go and arrest them then? He said, well, the girls had lied so much before. Who's to say they're not lying now? Who's to say that, you know, maybe it wasn't somebody else and they're, she's, Rachel's lying and covering up for them. Then it goes all over the news. We arrest the wrong people and the right person gets away. Like, so they, there was a method to their madness here. School goes crazy. Their high school got so bad and the rumors got so bad after finding out that Skylar's remains were found and so many rumors and whispers were going around about the two girls that Rachel and Sheila actually had to leave that high school. The holidays came around and Skylar's parents did not even celebrate. It was just another day to them. They did not have their baby girl anymore. She was absolutely gone. But at this point, the parents' plan was to get justice for their daughter. They wanted to know what happened and they were willing to cooperate in any way they needed to. As time went on, the investigators were able to obtain a search warrant and they searched Sheila's car and in the trunk, they found Skylar's DNA and that is what they needed to arrest her. When they arrested her, long story short, they ended up getting a plea deal with her and they both pled out to murder of their best friend. And Skylar's dad broke down in court. Do you hear me? I will leave a video linked down below for you guys to watch. Seeing her dad, oh my gosh, you guys. I, I just can't, the mom too. Nothing, you know, I'm not taking anything. The mom loved her daughter too. I'm not saying anything about her, but the dad like, that was his baby girl. So many little videos of him playing with his daughter and like, he knew something was wrong from the beginning. He knew it when he walked in his daughter's room and she was not there. And to now find out it was the two best friends from second grade and middle school, the one that she did everything with, the one that she trusted, the two girls that she trusted, man. Sheila took a plea deal, which gave her life in prison, but eligible for parole in just 15 years. Stay with me here, you guys, I got opinions. Rachel took a plea deal, which is what I'm assuming, in my opinion, that whenever she met the you know, investigators at her lawyer's office, she probably struck a deal right then. Like, okay, I'm gonna tell you where the body is. I'm gonna tell you what happened to her, but you have to work this out for me. You know, that's that would be the only thing, why else meet at a lawyer's office if you're just gonna tell it all, unless you're trying to strike a deal. That's what I think happened. Keep going here. So she ended up getting 30 years in prison, but parole in just 10 years. And that was mind blowing to me. So wrapping up the story real quick, 
Skylar Niece, 16 years old, murdered by her two best friends. They covered it up. They acted like they had no idea. They were involved in the search and looking for her, specifically and especially Sheila. I mean, she was over at her parents' house every day, sitting on her bed with her. Like, Skylar's mom tells this story about, like, one day Sheila came over to the house and Sheila would just, like, open the door and walk in. She was like another daughter to them. And she walked in, she was talking to the parents. She said, do you mind if I go into Skylar's room? And the parents said, no, you can go in there. And they're feeling bad for Sheila because they're like, look at how hard this is for her 16 year old friend who's just lost her best friend. And she goes in there and the mom comes in there and they sit on Skylar's bed and they cry together. And Sheila tells Skylar's mom, like, how could she do this to us? How could she just leave us or sneak out? Or where would she go? And Skylar's mom is comforting Sheila. And she's the one that grew her. Oh my gosh, you guys, it's just unbelievable. Unflip-flopping believable. Okay, so that is the story. One, Sheila gets life parole in 15 years. Rachel, because she struck the deal, allegedly, got 30 years with parole in 10 years. So where are they now? They're both in prison. They're both 24 years old which means Rachel's 10 years is going to be up in just a few years because she got sentenced to prison after she was 16 years old. But that's just crazy to me that just in a few years, she could get out on parole. And I struggle with this because I do know that they were 16. And so you want to say, okay, like they're children, children can make mistakes. And you guys know that I was in prison. I got sentenced to three years in prison whenever I was 21 years old. And I've told you guys about the YO program. There are literally children, like 14, 13 year olds that have killed somebody that are in there for life. And they, you know, you think, okay, like these kids, like why did they make these decisions? Da, 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 da. But 10 years, you just, oh my God, that, that to me is a bit too lenient. I'm sorry. It's just my personal opinion. You know, 10 years goes by like this. I mean, my son's about to be 10 years old. I feel like I just had him yesterday. Skylar's whole entire life is gone and her parents and her family and everybody and friends that loved her. At the same time though, I do want to say that I feel bad for everybody that loved these two girls too. I mean, there's there's no winners in these types of situations. There are no winners. Everybody is hurt, except for Sheila because she does seem a bit like a sociopath, but we're going to get there too. So Rachel just recently got married in prison to a woman that was, I guess, in prison with her. And then she got out and she came back and she's married her and now she's married. So there's a lot of rumors going around if possibly the motive, because see, that's another thing. We still don't actually know the motive. When the investigators asked these two girls why they did it, they said, well, we just didn't want to be friends with her anymore. And he was like, what? He was like, yeah, we didn't like her anymore. And like, nobody can really wrap their mind around that. Like you, just cause you don't like somebody, you don't want to be friends with them. Don't mean you kill them. So there was rumors going around in the high school. Side note, we all know how high school rumors are. They can literally come out of nowhere. So it doesn't hold a lot of weight in my opinion. Nevertheless, there was a lot of rumors going around that Skylar knew their deep, dark secrets and they were trying to get rid of her so they wouldn't come out. But again, like I said earlier in the video, unless the secrets were like you murdered somebody or you've done something that's going to cost you your life in some way, that your secrets couldn't be that bad. Not to the point that you would go and do this. So now that it has come out that Rachel married a female, it is said that possibly, I don't believe this, but possibly the motive is that because she was in such a religious background that she was, you know, a lesbian the whole time and that because of her feelings towards women and the relationship that she had in secret with Sheila, she didn't want it out. But now that she's in prison, she can be herself and be open. I don't know about all that. This is what I think. You guys ready? And I know you guys get so mad at me when I sympathize or empathize at all with a person that has done something bad. But the only way I can give y'all my honest opinion is if I think of every single angle. Okay, so that's just me. I have to do it. If I put myself in their shoes, what I think is, I think Sheila could possibly be a sociopath or a psychopath or something like that because, and I think that she initiated it, instigated it, and Rachel went along with it for whatever reason. And I'm not making, she, Rachel ain't no victim. She needs to be her butt right up in there. And I honestly think her getting out on 10 years in parole is too lenient. I just do. I'm sorry. 
15, 20, maybe. She's gonna get out at 26, 27, 28 years old. Like, she needs a little bit more time. Sorry, sit there and think about it. Like, you killed somebody. It's not like you were six and you accidentally tripped and you had no idea what you were doing. They planned this out for months. But nevertheless, the fact that Sheila could actually go back to the house and do all that stuff with their parents, sit there and cry and allow Skylar's mom and dad to comfort her, you have to be some sort of something. Who could do that? You guys. And then the fact that like the investigators said that every single time they interviewed Sheila, complete eye contact, cool, calm and collective, baby, no sweat off her back. That you have to have a certain type of personality disorder to be able to do that, you guys. Like, seriously, come on. Like, don't y'all get nervous if you lie or something? Like, oh my God. You know what I mean? Like, oh my gosh. Like, if I eat all the cookies, and I'll, tr listen, I'm tell you right now, I will eat all the cookies sometimes and try to hide the darn wrappers <laughs> or something. So, my, and my husband comes in, he's like, where's the cookies? I'm like, Ooh, I ate them. I be wanting to blame it on the kids. Y'all act like y'all don't do that. Y'all, listen, I got Oreos in my top drawer right now, okay? Nobody needs to know that. For her to be able to literally murder her friend and go do, I think she's a sociopath and psychopath and gosh, she's gonna be out in a couple years. She gets, she's up for parole in just 15 years. <sighs> Anyways, so that is the story. That's my opinion on it. I also want to say that I can't help but to wonder when it comes to the internet nowadays, which the internet is a beautiful thing. It allows us to connect with each other. I get to connect with all of you guys. That's just my personal opinion. I am so grateful for it and I love it, okay? It's a blessing, but it also comes with its drawbacks. And you know, years ago, 30, 40 years ago, when you have people that are sociopaths or psychopaths, they had to find different ways to maybe feed that part of them, that hunger, like go into politics, you know, they say that a lot of politicians are actually sociopaths. Look that up. Or if you had like a, a Ted Bundy situation, you know, like he had to come up with all those ideas on his own and do all that, right? But nowadays, like kids are just like, or people, they can look online and see things and maybe get inspired in all of the wrong ways. I don't know, you guys, because when you think about the situation with Tristan Bailey, how the little boy who was arrested, who was the alleged murderer in that case and how he posted on social media and then you saw all of these social media posts of people trying to claim they were involved because it's actually cool. I don't know, you guys, it's so bizarre. To be able to let these two girls out, like they still haven't even really said why they did it other than, well, we just didn't like her. Well, if you guys are murderers when you just don't like somebody, I mean, there's gonna be a tons of people that you don't like throughout your life, you know, or you get like, I don't know, it's just devastating. Devastating, I don't know what to think other than it's heartbreaking. What do you guys think? Do you think the sentence is sufficient? No arguing in the comment section. I wanna see everybody's opinion, even if you don't agree with me. I like you guys' opinion. I wanna hear where your thoughts are with this. Do you think that, that the sentences are efficient or do you think that they should be a little bit longer? What do you think? My heart goes out to all of the families, all of them, especially goes out to Skylar's parents. Like. They will never get over this. They will never get over this. The moment that their daughter kissed them the night before was the last time they saw their daughter in the flesh alive. And the very last time they ever saw her alive was when they saw her on the security footage, walking across the street with her purse over her shoulder, climbing in the back seat with her two best friends. And she drove off to her demise. Devastating, you guys. So I pray that they are able to at least enjoy some parts of life again. So, all right, my loves, thank you guys so, so much for hanging out with me and listening to the story, requesting this story and being here. Thank you. As always, please do not forget to like this video. It's a free way that you can help your girl out. And until next time, I love you guys so, so, so very much. And I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye. Love you guys. Bye. We are, we are dreaming in the dark We are nothing more than dust Search but you stay lost We are, we are reaching for the stars